Hey and welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, my name is Simon Anthony, um, along with Mark Goodliff. Uh, we run this channel. Uh, we're both uh, very keen puzzle enthusiasts, as uh, regular viewers will know. Um, and today we're going to take a look at uh, an anti-night Sudoku from the US Sudoku Championship, which happened two weekends ago. Now I'm hoping this will be a great puzzle because uh, I know the uh, the man who set the puzzle, Wei Hua Huang, who is, uh, as well as being one of the greatest puzzle solvers of all time, a multiple time winner of the World Puzzle Championship, he is also a phenomenal puzzle setter. So uh, I'm hopeful that this will be as elegant as his puzzles normally are. Um, now, just a quick reminder for those of you that aren't used to the anti night restriction, what this means is it comes from chess. It means that we can't have, for example, if we look at the 1 here, there could not be a 1 in this square. And that's because a knight in chess, if there was a knight on this square, it could jump to this square. If we imagine that the whole board is a, a chess board. So anything that's a knight's move away cannot be the same number. And that leads to some interesting logic with these puzzles. Now, um, I, I don't anticipate this puzzle being monstrously hard. We have done a couple of anti-knight moves. Sudoku's recently, uh, particularly from I think it's Ethan, uh, his his uh, computer generated um, anti night move puzzles are monstrous, and they've taken me sort of half an hour to wade through them. Now this is a uh, you know this is a puzzle designed for a speed solving competition, so I think we should be going much faster. But we're still, as I say before, we're still going to find some elegant stuff. Uh, or I would certainly expect to find some elegant stuff in a way while puzzle. So how would we do this one? Let's have a look. Um, isn't it beautiful, by the way? Look at this one to nine box that he's just planted in the middle of, of the grid there. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, fours, right, there's fours in those two squares. So that's going to be a four. And twos, that means that's going to be a two. And bar humbug, I can't. I thought that those tap four and that two would be helpful, but I can't see how. Okay. Um, well, we can pencil mark some fours up there. Let's do that. And twos down here. Ah, okay. So one trick uh, for Knight's Move Sudoku is that if you get a box like this with a number in the central perimeter square, this six is bizarrely powerful when looking at this block. And that's because this 6 sees this square by knight's move, this square by knight's move, and this move, this square by normal Sudoku. So in fact this 6 prevents there from being 6 in any of those three positions along row 2. Combine that with this 6, removing those squares, and that one has got to be a 6. And now Okay, so there's a 6 in one of those two squares in this block because this square is a knight's move away from this 6 here. Uh, ah, now I see. Okay, so now we have an 8 and a 9 in this block. So where can we put an 8 and a 9 now in row 3? And as we can't have an 8 and a 9 in any of those three squares, these... Oops, um, these two squares are going to be 8 and 9, which means this square must be an 8, because we know the 8 is in one of these three positions. This square, is, or this 8, removes that position, and this square sees this square by knight's move, so that square is the only position an 8 can go into. And therefore, we get to pencil mark 8s at the bottom and pencil mark 9's into one of these two squares. And, yeah, where can we put a 4 now in row 3? Well, we know the 4 in this block is either here or here. Well, if I was to put it here, now, now there's no way I can put a 4 into row 3. So it must be here. Uh, by the way, I mean, goes without saying, if you wanted to try this puzzle yourselves, I think I said this earlier, but I may not have done, then just click on the link under the under the puzzle and it will take you to our software and you get to solve it exactly in the way that I am. So five sevens here. 
much lines there. Ah, okay. Now, yeah. So, when you get adjacent squares that can only be a single digit in a Knight's Move puzzle, it's important to appreciate now. Let's have a think about where 5 can go in this block. And it can't go here, because if we were to have a 5 here, it would eliminate the 5 from this square and this square, because it's a Knight's Move away. But the same is true of this square. This square also couldn't be a 5, because it removes the 5 there and there. So there is not a 5 in either of these two squares. And there isn't a 5 here, because of this 5 at the bottom of the grid. So we get to pencil mark some fives on the left-hand side. And in fact, now, now sort of feed back into it ourselves, don't we? Because now this square must be a five, which means we get a five and a seven as well. Seven, seven. Oh, I thought that was going to be really powerful, but it's not quite, is it? Um, Bother. <laughs> uh, right, we've got two sevens there, so let's pencil mark sevens into those two squares. Um, oh, 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 okay, now we can do another trick, look. So I've just talked about the importance. When you lock a number into two squares that are adjacent like this, you immediately know, in Knight's Move Sudokus, that neither of these squares can be a seven. So where are we going to put a seven in this block now? Well, you might think of that square, but that square sees this one by a knight's move. So the 7 is actually in one of those two squares of the only valid positions for a 7. And therefore, that's not a 7. That's a 7. That might not be massively important, but it's still a nice spot. So now... What do we need in this top left block? We need two, three, four, or five. So threes must be up in one of those two squares because of the three here and the three here. So there are threes in one of those two squares on the right hand side. And on this square is really restricted. This square sees a five and a three from these two positions. So what can this be? It can be a 2, can't be a 3, can't be a 4, so it can only be a 2. That is a 2. That means this is a 2. Now there's a 2 in one of those two squares, and there's a 1 in one of those two squares. So this square must be a 3 now. It's the only this square obviously can't be a 1 or a 6. It can't be a 6 because of this 6 here. So that's a 3. Uh, just check column uh, 6 here. So we still need to place 2, 6 and 9. So this square can be 2 or 9. This square can be 2 or 6. This square can be 6 or 9. Now, let's just check and see whether anything is a knight's move away. Not quite. I don't think so, anyway. Um, okay, come back over here. Let's finish off the work we were thinking about. So 4 must be either there or there. And the other number was 5. 5 looks unrestricted to me. This 2 rules out a 2 at the bottom, so it's a 2 here. 2 must be in either this square or this square. Again, I don't think I can see a knight's move resolving that. 4, 5, 4, 1, 3, 7. Uh, okay. So, how do we get the next number out of this grid? This square, this, if we look down column 5 here, you can see we need to place 1, 4, 5 and 7. 
Now that square can't be a 4, 5 or a 7 because of the contents of row 9. So that's a 1, which means there's a 1 in one of those two squares. Still need to place 4, 5 and 7. This square can only be a 5 or a 7 then, because it sees the 4. Uh, this square can be anything, I think. I think that can be 4, 5 or 7. What am I missing then? Feels like I must be missing something fairly important here. Um, fives, six nines. Uh, ah, fives are a bit restricted in this block. This 5 is stopping there being 5 in one of those two squares. This 5 is preventing a 5 from there. So there must be 5 in one of those two positions. Now, we still need to look at... We've, we've pencil marked 9s. We haven't pencil marked 1s or 4s. So can we do anything with 1s or 4s in this top block? Obviously, with the 1s here... And this one here, the ones ah, there, there, there it is. So, ones can only be in these two positions, but this one sees that square by a knight's move. So that means that must be a one, and that actually is going to unwind the whole of this top box, isn't it? Gives us everything. Wow, wow, that yeah. Sorry, that I should have probably seen that more quickly, but it was. Wasn't totally obvious. Now this must be a four because we have a four here and a four here. We know this can't be a four because of the knight's move. Ah, and there's a one-four pair now. Look over here, and this four resolves it. So four and one. And where can we put a one in this three by three block now? We can't have one here because it's a knight's move away from those two squares. So it must be in one of those two positions. And you'll see immediately that that marries up. Well, actually, this one resolves where the one goes in the middle, so that must be the one at the top there. And now there's a one in one of those two squares. This must be three and seven into these two positions. Now that square sees that one by knight's move, so this one can only be a three. Seven. Now, now where do we put a 7 in this block? Well, this one can't be a 7 because of the knight's move. Therefore, the only valid position is there. And again, I think we're going to be able to pencil mark 7s. Ah, and this 7 removes this option. This can't be a 7 because of the knight's move. So there's a 7. That means this is a 5, which we could have got anyway because we've done the column. Um, now, this must be a 7. Again, that's just straightforward Sudoku, nothing clever at all. 3 and 6 into these two squares. And I don't think we can resolve that yet, but let's put it in anyway. And this must be 8 and 9 then. And again, we don't have enough information yet to resolve that. So... So what is the next number? Maybe I'm going to have a look down column 9. We need to place 1, 3, 6 and 8. Three, six, eight. Uh, maybe along row 4 where we need to place 2, 8 and 9. So this problem, that, uh, this square sees a 9 so that, and a 2. So that square can only be an 8. We get to pencil mark eights into those two squares. Remember, not this one because it sees this square by by a knight's move. This must be an eight in this three by three block because of the eights in these two squares. Uh, 
Uh, now this, in theory, can be 2 or 9. Now is there anything we can do to restrict that? Let's label it and just check whether it's seeing anything by way of knight's move. I don't think it is. No. Uh, now where can we put a 9 in this block though, with this 9 and this 9 only in this square now? And so we do resolve where the 2 goes. Nine must be in one of these two squares. Six and three. This three here means that we can pencil mark threes. In fact, that must be a three. That's the only position a three can go. Now this can't be. Can this be a six? I was about to say it can't be. Well, let's resolve that like this. Remove the 9 here. This is 6 or 9. Ah, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. I think I might have just highlighted that cell. Um, six, nine. So this is a 1 or a 6. No, this is a 1 because look, we've got 1, 6, 9 to place in column 7. This sees a 6 and a 9. So that's a 1. That's a 1. That's a 6. 6. 9, 9, 8, 8 here, 8 here, and I think that is the puzzle solved. So as usual from Wei Hua, just a beautiful puzzle. Um, quite tricky actually. Uh, I felt like um, I wasn't very quick about that. I'm not sure whether that was because I was being particularly slow today or, or whether I was actually you know, it, it was a difficult-ish puzzle. I'm going to be interested to see what you guys made of it in the feedback. Uh, this should be two. We still need three and six into these two squares. This six here sees that square. So there's three and six now. This must be a six, six, five, five, three, three. And if everything's worked out, I can put a nine in here. Check and it's all good. Now, just a note to say that when you, uh, if you do finish the puzzle and check it, like I have just done there, um, don't necessarily trust the feedback that you get because the algorithm we're using to check grids isn't taking into account the restriction yet. So it's not checking that everything is a knight's move away. Hopefully, this grid is is right. Um, in editing, I'll check and if there's a problem, I'll flag it. But uh, if there isn't a problem, you should compare your grid to this grid and check you've got the same thing. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Do subscribe if you're not subscribers already. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.